It is important we're questioning him. It may be, but you won't get anything out of him for some time yet. Unreadable. All of it. Papier mache. I thought all you were entitled to ask him was his number, rank, and name. I want a lot more than that. Come back in a couple of days. How long was he in the sea? Mm, hard to tell. 24 hours, possibly. Was he wounded? Abrasion, shock. Mostly it's exposure. He'll live. Come back in a couple of days. He was washed up off a place called St. Nicholas de Bram. There's been no report of any surface engagement anywhere near there in the last week. Mm, he's not been in the water for much more than 24 hours. But a Junkers 88 reported attacking what might have been a half-surfaced submarine about six kilometres offshore. Could he have floated in from that? I'm not an authority on French tides. I'm a doctor, not a harbour master. It was dark, you see. The pilot only had a glimpse. The moon was clouded over. He just saw what might have been a submarine, flashed a challenge, got no reply, turned and dropped a stick of bombs. He reported the submarine as possibly hit. That seems to solve the problem, doesn't it? <laughs> Pilots are a race of optimists. His uniform, how badly is it torn? Well, see for yourself. I wouldn't call it a uniform. Sweater slacks and rags. No signs of an explosion? My dear Hauptsturmfuhrer, you really must stop assuming I'm a detective. All I can tell you is he's suffering from exposure. Come back in two days' time. I'll be back tomorrow. Deine Wiese, wie der Treue sein. I told you that nurse wouldn't be any good, didn't I? Schön zu mir, auch keine sein, auch keine. You won't get a joy right out of a nurse, not unless you're a doctor. All right. Who's a clever dick who's playing games with my trousers?
papers. You're German? Yes. I thought you were another Frenchman who was going to say he'd missed his last train. Who took this photograph of you? At home. Mm-hmm. You ought to sue him. What are you doing here this time of night, anyway? Finding out about the trains. I got the week off. Wish I had. Well, it's half past one. I came off duty at midnight. You should have stayed in bed. There isn't a train till seven to anywhere. And that'll be late. My sister lives at Cologne. Cologne, where you come from. Oh, yes. My sister lives there. Just outside. Gee, God, what a dump this is. Yes. You look ill. I had flu. Mm, it's going around. Where did you get a cushy job like yours? Luck. Mm, I'm being three and they still call me up. I've got a rupture, you see. Oh, yes. Hospital order. What do you have to do? Tidy up after the doctors. Need any special training? Not really. Well, you must have been doing it before the war. I was. Oh, well, that's it, isn't it? I in my own shop. It's only small, of course, but... Well, you think with me being B3, they, they let me free to go on with it. I suppose it's cheaper using a ready-trained hospital orderly for a military hospital. I've seen some of your lot around in civvies. But I'd have thought that uh, you'd have to travel in uniform. My uniform's in my bag. Where's that? Outside. Oh, I wouldn't leave it there if I were you. They'll pinch anything, these froggies. Yeah, I've been wondering... If, uh, if I put him for a transfer to being a hospital orderly. Could try. Yeah, I might just do that. But if I were you, I'd uh, change into uniform for the military police see you. Yes, I will. Well, um, there was a fire in the waiting room. Well, it's out now, of course, but uh, a bit warmer than out here. I'd keep down there if I were you. Yes, I will. Look, I'll be in the hut outside. Um, if anyone comes in, uh, tip me off, will you? Yes. I'm supposed to stand out here all night, but stuff that in this weather.
You still say you're Private Hyden of the Medical Corps? Yes. And you are not trying to desert? That's right, sir. On your feet! Do you expect me to believe that you just happened to see the boat and you just happened to get in it? I'm on leave, sir. And you just wanted to know how it started. I wasn't trying to go anywhere, sir. I mean, I don't know how to sail a boat or anything. Yes, but you knew how to start it. Very good. Luck, sir. Your phone call, sir. Hello, Hospital of St. Mark. This is Captain Deals of the military police. Now, tell me, do you have a private hiding on your staff? Oh. When did you last see him? Then find me someone who does know what he looks like. Keep your arms up. Straight. Hello, yes? Yes, that's right. I see. Yes, you're quite sure of that. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Well, Private Hayden, I was wrong. You may stand up. You know, I really thought you were a dessert. <laughs> well, you must admit, it did seem rather strange you wanting to start a boat. I suppose it did, sir. Well, you heard I spoke to the hospital, and you are not a deserter, sir. You know what the penalty of desertion is. Yes, sir. However, they confirmed what you said. Private Hayden is indeed on the staff of the hospital. Sir. There's only one anomaly left. Private Hayden is not on leave. He is still at the hospital. The man I spoke to on the telephone could actually see him out of his window as he talked to me. So who are you? All right, I'll tell you. Oh, no, you won't. You can tell a Gestapo in Paris. Send him in. And shut that window. Yes, sir. I didn't tell you to sit. Private Hayden. No. You said you were Private Hayden. You have the papers of Private Hayden. These papers. I've been trying. Silence! To... You were detained as a deserter a week ago. You've been here two days. Well. I don't know. I haven't a watch, and my cell has no window. Have they been feeding you? I've had two meals since I came here. Two meals in two days, you tell me. I'm sorry, I'll try. He has been it. fed. If you're not Private Hayden, then who are you? Lieutenant Richard Roxburgh Player, Royal Navy. And you speak perfect German. I spent a lot of my childhood in Germany. I wasn't asking you about your childhood. I was saying you spoke perfect German. Yes. Well, the Royal Navy is lucky to have officers of such a low rank who are so fluently bilingual. Perhaps the war hasn't been going on long enough yet for us to sort out all our talents. Or our identities. <laughs> and how do you say you arrived in Europe? My ship was sunk. Oh, what ship? I'm afraid I can't answer that. I think you'd better. Under the Geneva Convention, I am obliged to tell you my name and rank. That is all. You're quite right. Always assuming I believe you. Why shouldn't you? You said that you arrived in France because your ship had been sunk. Yes. But we have no record of any British ship being sunk at the time and place when you say you arrived. I'm not keeping your records. Anyway, British ships don't come near enough to the French coast for anyone, even as talented a man as you to survive in the water long enough to be able to drift ashore. They're being sunk in the middle of the Atlantic. All right, I'll tell you this much. It was a submarine. Which submarine? That, of course, I can't tell you. We have no record of any submarine being sunk. You're being very stupid. First, you say you're Private Hayden. You have the papers to prove it. Then you say you're an officer in the Royal Navy. But you have no uniform, no papers, no identity disc, nothing. You're captured within a few kilometers of Saint-Nazaire, which everyone knows is a major U-boat base. Can you give me any reason why I should find your second story more credible than your first? The hospital. St. Mark's Hospital at Aulnay in France. I was taken there. That's where I escaped from. So you said in your statement when you first came here, 
I have, of course, been in contact with the hospital. Well? It is a hospital run by the army. It is partly full of British wounded, but they have no record of any lieutenant player, Royal Navy. All the other wounded, they had some documents, but there has not been a lieutenant player in that hospital. I was in the sea. My papers will have been destroyed. Convenient. Are the British Navy's uniforms now made of a material that dissolved like their identity papers? I've been trying to tell you... The I hospital was... reported no uniform of a Royal Navy lieutenant. They told me that many of the uniforms were torn and bloodstained. I've been trying... I was speaking! The hospital assured me that despite anything, they would recognise and record your uniform if you'd had one, if you'd ever been in the hospital. They were quite certain. Look, when we were hit, I was off watch. I was just wearing a sweater and trousers. I was asleep. There was no warning. I see. And, um, the sweater. Would it have your rank in it? No. He's an idiot. You talk to him. Do sit down. Thank you. Now, can you think of any proof that you're a lieutenant player? Proof? No, I can't think of any proof. Player. You see, it's not an uncommon name. So with no identity papers, or to be precise, with identity papers you say don't belong to you, no uniform, Coming, you say, from a hospital that has no record of your They'd own... They'd recognise me if I went back there. Oh, I doubt it. They have over a hundred British prisoners in the hospital, and you say you weren't there very long. Anyway, I doubt if my commanding officer would be keen to have you escorted halfway across France on the off chance of you. I beg you, while we're alone, tell me the truth. I don't know what you want me to say. Anything that'll help you. But it's much better to tell me than... And to wait until my commanding officer finds out. But, Cigarette. But what the hell are you I have you a great respect at? for the British. I give you my word I will try to help you, but you must trust me. I've given you my Let's name... Let's start at the beginning. We'll ignore your name for the moment. I've given you my name a dozen times. Yes, it's just that down here you're under the name of Haydn. How is it, if you're British, you speak perfect German? I spent a lot of my childhood in Germany. Where, exactly? In Berlin. Why? My father was a councillor at the embassy. Councillor? That's a senior diplomat, isn't yes. it? Yes. What was his name? James Thorold Player, but I don't see what How this do is... How do you spell Thorold? T-H-U-R-R-O-L-D. Have you any decorations? Orders of chivalry? The CMG and the OBE, why? Just testing your authenticity. Or your memory. But you weren't educated in Germany. I mean, you'd not be registered on a school list. No, I went to prep school in England, then on to Dartmouth. I just came here for the holidays. I see. And your mother? Did she live My in My mother Berlin? died when I was three. Oh, I'm sorry. Where's your father now? He's dead, too. He was taken ill here in August, 38, his heart. He was taken back to England. He died three months later. I am trying to help you, but you must help me, too. All that you've told me, you could have got that from any published diplomatic list. We can check it, of course, but... It's information anyone could give. I don't know what you're talking about. I've told you who I am. There are various possibilities. One, you might even be Private Haydn. But we've been. No, for I all don't that. really believe that. Secondly, you might be Lieutenant Player, Royal Navy. In which case, I think you'll agree we need a little more evidence than, uh, well, than you've given us. What sort of evidence? Hmm? Proof. But I. I'm not calling you a liar. It's just that, that I think that my commanding officer would only be convinced if, for instance, you gave him the name of your submarine, where it was based, what it was doing I off the coast of France. I my name and rank. Yes, indeed. But even supposing you are Lieutenant Player, and I'd like to believe you, that doesn't mean that the rest of your story is true. Under the Geneva Convention, I'm obliged Either to tell you... you're being very naive or rather silly, we need proof. You can tell me, or you can tell my commanding officer. It would be much better to tell me. As I was saying, under the Geneva Convention... Yes, not everybody is protected by the Geneva Convention. What do you mean? Spies are not protected. Spies? Here. Have a cigarette.
Tell me what your orders were, who your contacts are, how you landed. It would be much better I to I have tell no me. orders, I have no contacts. I've already told you how I landed. Stand up! Well? Now, now you will tell me the truth. I'll take over, sir. Hmm. I could do with a good night's sleep. He's had two hours back in his cell. He's not being fed again. Hmm. Well, see you in the morning. Good night, sir. Good night. Same story, of course. Oh, yes. Send out the prisoner in number 12, will you? Oh, no, in about five minutes. In the meantime, could you get me something from the canteen? No, anything they've got. On a tray. No, I only want... I only want the truth. You hungry? No, I'm on a diet. Oh, I'd forgotten you haven't eaten. <laughs> Here. Have this. In exchange for what? No, not in exchange for anything. It's just that I'd overlooked you. Would have missed out on the meal in the cell. <laughs> what meal? <laughs> Go on, help yourself. I can always get some more. Don't try and speak with your mouth full, but if you could think of anything that might help me to believe you. I'm too tired to think. For instance, your father. What about him? Where did he live in Berlin? He had a flat in the Schulberg Ring. Number 17? Yes. Mm. How did you know? From the pre-war diplomatic list. But you could have learnt it in exactly the same way. You see, I am trying to help you. Now, do you remember anyone else who lived there? What? The building where you say your father lived. Can you remember anyone else who lived there? Yes. There was a boy, about my age. He lived in the flat below. Mm -hmm. We went to stay with his uncle in Bavaria when I was about 15 or 16. What the hell was his name? Conrad. His name was Conrad. Conrad what? God. It began with an H. Hadera. Conrad Hadderer. Good. What happens now? You get a name out of the diplomatic list. I knew him before. I was talking. You get a name of someone with a son your age. That's not difficult. The diplomatic list gives his address in Berlin. So all you need is a telephone directory. Then you can find out who else lives in that block of flats. What sort of idiots do you think we are? Conrad, he can confirm who I say I am. I'm sure he could. For your information, Conrad Hadler served in Poland as a flying officer with the Luftwaffe. I told you. He was awarded the Iron Cross. Get hold of him, he'll tell you who I am. Posthumously. Though we do not publish casualty lists, we do publish the names of people who are awarded decorations. And even British intelligence should be able to work out that a man who was decorated posthumously is dead. Isn't there anyone else? I don't know. I can't think. I'm too tired. To You'd think. better think. Just give me a moment, will you? I'm tired of waiting while you think out more and more stories. I know someone. And he won't be in the army. I'm still waiting. Why didn't I think of him before? Paul von Eisinger. He was something in your foreign office. Paul von Eisinger? Yes. You work with my father. Right. This one had better exist. You can go. God. Prisoner number 12 is to be fed and then allowed to sleep. That was a bit of luck. Yes. He actually believed we thought he was a spy. It's pathetic. 
that anybody would send a spy with a hopeless cover story like that. He had no papers at all. What happens now, sir? I suppose he'll get what we want for some time. A trip to Berlin? Yes, we can hardly expect someone to come all the way to Paris just to identify a stray prisoner. Certainly not Graf Eisinger. Herr von Eisinger? Graf Eisinger? I have a prisoner for you, sir. My dear Dick, isn't it incredible that all these people have to fight each other just so that we can meet again? If you will sign for him, sir. When you run down him? He's still in my charge, sir, until you sign for him. But if I shake hands with him, it means I'll have to shake hands with you too, doesn't it? Please do what I say. Come in, it's freezing out there on the corridor. You haven't changed at all. Apart from those dreadful clothes. Now what do you want? If you will sign for him, sir. You don't propose to remain there, do you? Order, sir. Nonsense. People will think I'm under house arrest. Besides, your uniform clashes with the wallpaper. It's still order, sir. We are on the third floor. I doubt if my guests will try to jump out of the window. There is one foyer in this block of flats where the lift and the stairs both emerge. The front entrance and the passage that leads to the alley at the back both open onto the foyer. If you really intend to prevent my friend, and by implication myself from escaping, you will do so from there. Understand? Yes, sir. Heil Hitler! Natural. Now, before you say a word, and I want to hear all about everything. I really cannot have you in that state. My bedroom's through here. On the bed, you'll find a variety of suits. I've got quite a choice. I hope one of them fits you. The bathroom's en suite. You'll find a brand bath. Oh, these shirts, they're for you too. And then we can chat. I think it is more comfortable to speak English, yeah? Besides, I'm proud of my English. Do go and have your bath. We're only at war. The world hasn't come to an end. Oh, just one thing. I've given my servant the evening off, so I'd be very grateful if you'd give me your word you won't try to escape. Not when you're with me. You can do what you like with anyone else. Only, since I got crippled, I doubt if I could put up more than a token resistance. And I doubt if the Nazis would forgive me. You will give me your word, won't you? Yes. Well, I'm with you. Fine. That's better. It's a little tight across the chest, and for myself, I think I might take half an inch off the trouser legs, but quite presentable. Why have they brought me here? They wanted me to identify you, that's all. What would you like to drink? I, I think I've got most things. Sherry, gin, vodka. We get real Russian vodka by arrangement with Uncle Joe. Scotch? Yeah. Whatever you like. A scotch, please. Soda or water? Soda. Sit down. You know, when this horse rolled over me in the Olympic trials and broke my back, I was so angry, I had him shot. Unforgivable. If it hadn't been for him, I'd be sitting in France on some windswept headland, pretending to be a soldier. Say when. Thank you. To old friends, If all they wanted was to confirm I'm who I say I am, they wouldn't have to bring me here. You must allow me a little initiative. I like to see my friends, and if people Did are stupid enough to, get me to give you the name of my ship. I didn't even know you were on a ship. Anyway, this government doesn't tell me to do anything. Oh no, 
However, they did say on the phone that you were a naval officer. Ah, that you claimed you were a naval officer. My ship was sunk. That was bad luck. I escaped, was caught, and the Gestapo got the idea I was a spy. Oh, dear. Of course, they are terribly stupid. I hope they weren't as unpleasant as they can be. I've met people I took two more. Oh, yes, someone from the SS phoned me this morning. Apparently, he'd heard you were coming. They are forming a thing called the Free Corps. Troops of various nationalities, British among them, who will fight alongside ours. Against Britain? Presumably. We've beaten everyone else. He wanted me, uh, that is, if you were indeed the person you claim to be, to use all my diplomatic guile to persuade you to accept a commission in this organization, when it is formed. So, so I have. Will you? No. As I assume. But if anyone mentions it, I asked you. One has to be very careful. But it won't last much longer, that's the main thing. The war? My impression is that it's hardly started. The war as well, but I really meant our government. And people like the Gestapo. The damage they're doing terrifies me. They're gaining quite a reputation. That is exactly what I mean. Next thing, everyone will assume that every German is automatically a Nazi. One doesn't hear much about resistance to that. That doesn't mean that there isn't any. Believe me, the only thing that's keeping Hitler in power is the fact that there's a war on. Virtually the whole of the diplomatic corps, or not that idiot Ribbentrop, of course. Almost all the generals, the more intelligent staff officers, well, all the intelligentsia. The one thing they want is to get rid of Hitler. One would have imagined they could do just that if they oh, really wanted to. if they sneezed together, they'd blow him back to his native Austria. And the only reason they don't is that they feel committed to supporting him, at least passively, as long as there's a war. What's morale like in Britain? Good. I find it terribly touching. But it's a tragedy, Dick. Britain can't possibly win. Everyone knows that. The British don't. Well, everyone except the British. Let's be serious. Britain is isolated, not an ally in the world. Germany rules Europe. Now, the last thing I want is a Nazi Germany ruling Europe. But if Britain joined Germany, then all those of us who want to get rid of Hitler, we'd know we'd have the support of Britain. So Hitler would go. How? Does it matter how? Whether the army court marshals him or whether he just retires like the Kaiser did. After all, he's always saying he wants to get back to those wretched watercolors of his. How is unimportant. But until Britain realizes her position and realizes who her real friends are and stops forcing all the Germans who hate Hitler to support him because you bracket us all together, until then, I'm afraid we'll have to go on. And we'll go on until Britain surrenders. And you know what I feel about Britain. Well, same again. Thanks. If it's all right with you, I've booked a private room at the Adlon for dinner. Why? Why the Adlon? Because it's the only decent hotel left in Europe. Or do you mean why a private room? Why anything? Friendship. But Dick, I also want to make a suggestion to you. Now, the Adlon restaurant, well, you know what it's like. One may find the next table occupied by the conductor of Berlin Philharmonic, or one may find it occupied by Goebbels or Dennis. And what you have to suggest is... And I'd like it to remain confidential. You see, Dick, there are a number of us, with all modesty, really rather important people, who appreciate that we have a unique chance to ensure peace forever by creating the only unchallengeable alliance the world has ever known. Cheers. Cheers. All it needs is that Britain make peace now when she has real strength to bargain from, rather than later when she's been broken. Then we'll have a united Europe, which is something that Charlemagne and the Romans never achieved. Protected by the most powerful navy on earth, your navy... I gathered which navy you And had. the British Empire protected by the most powerful army on earth. Yours? I didn't mean the Italians. I got the idea somewhere that all this was what Hitler wanted. Who knows what the Führer wants? It varies from minute to minute. He, of course, would go. And the rest of the world? Who? The Russians? They wouldn't dare attack us. No, they could devote themselves to writing even longer novels. And to that agricultural research they're so interested in. Making one blade of grass go where two grew before. And the Americans? Oh, I always find it terribly difficult to take the Americans seriously. They put all their most talented people into musical comedies. And all their natural comedians into politics. Well. I presume the Gestapo hadn't ruined your appetite with excessive food? Not exactly. We might dine a little okay. early then. Graf Eisenberg. So now on my car in five minutes. 
the caviar is very good. Now the benefit of our unholy alliance with the Russians. Well, there are all the German dishes. You used to like them. It's a long time since I had caviar. I think I'll stay with the Bismarck ham. And the roast duckling with sauerkraut. Do you like truffles? What about the pork chops process? Whatever you say. Fine. And a bottle of Claret, I think. Caviar for the gentleman, and the pork chops brassard. I am having the herring and the duckling. And a bottle of the Aubryon. Very good, sir. Will you have a salad? Bring us a bowl of Gemicht. Sir. I'm afraid the service isn't what it used to be. Most of the waiters got called up. Some of these are Poles. Curious place, Poland. Did you ever go there? No. It's more an emotional concept than a country. Now, if you'll forgive my brusqueness, I'd like to make a suggestion to you. I assume there was some other reason you invited me here, apart from old times' sake. Yes, business and pleasure. Prost. Prost. But first, you must realize that I take a considerable risk in talking to you. I suppose so, yes. Until we do finally get rid of our ludicrous Führer, no German can feel really safe. So? I have already suggested to you that you accept the commission in the free corps. Which I declined. Of course. But my next suggestion is serious. Go on. The position now is better than most of us dare to hope. Britain's army has been destroyed, but, but your navy is intact. And your air force has done something which no one else has ever managed to do, which is to cut Reichsmarshal Goering down to size. The Battle of Britain, you uh, mean? A Battle of Britain, not the but Battle that of Britain. Was the but if the Luftwaffe had won that, I doubt if the ordinary German would accept the idea of a negotiated peace. You think they would now? Oh, we Germans are very malleable. You overthrow the Nazis and have free elections. Well, not exactly free elections. It's not one of our national talents. The last few times we tried, Hitler came top. So who would govern? Responsible people. Including you? Yes, I would expect to be offered a post. Come in. Please do start. You see what I mean? An alliance between Germany and England. Forever. The end of this absurd war between cousins. Britain's empire guaranteed by the German army. And who does Britain guarantee? Is Britain in a position to guarantee anything? The last place you guaranteed was Poland. No, it's quite simple. We have not natural frontiers. For almost all of German history, we have consisted of hundreds of little states. A man thought of himself as a Saxon or a Bavarian or whatever. And a long way after that as a German. We have had to fight two major wars to convince ourselves that we really existed. Uh, where do I come into all this? In either Germany or England, there are, I think, very few people who want a war. In Germany, now that we've won, there are even fewer who want to continue a war. In England, I cannot believe that most people want to continue a pointless struggle just to flatter the egos of your elderly politicians. That doesn't sound like the country I left. Ah, we have our contacts in England. People that really matter. You have finished the caviar. Yes. Good. I want you to go to certain people whose names I will give you. People who may not know you, but who know me, and who knew your father. And explain that we are now ready to make peace with England, offering her equal partnership and the protection of her empire. And no more Nazis, of course. It is not an ungenerous offer, Dick. In return, England must ask for an armistice. You seriously think I would do all this? Or could? I'm a prisoner of war, remember? Indeed. And as a prisoner of war, it is your duty to try to escape. I could help. Come in. I would suggest you left for Sweden. And may I ask why you trust me? Because you are an officer and a gentleman. You would give me your word. Of course, it must have occurred to you that I'm connected with our intelligence. It more or less goes with the job. Just as your father was with British intelligence. If you broke your word and escaped to England with my help and then didn't make these contacts, or told the British authorities who these contacts were, it wouldn't make any difference. Nobody would believe you. No difference except to you, of course. Meaning what? I would feel an obligation to the people I'm associated with. 
Let's not talk about that. No, let's talk about it. What difference would it make to me? Oh, believe me, I would hate to do this. But if the whole prospect of a peaceful and united Europe seemed to my colleagues in both our countries to have been put in danger, well, I would have in honor. I find this conversation most distasteful. But the life of one man, even a friend, against the lives of thousands may be killed. We have an organization in England which could do that, no trouble at all. I only tell you, because I know it will not happen. These people, why couldn't they do your liaison work? Why do you need me? You underestimate yourself. Obviously, if my colleagues and I are going to risk our lives, our real security being the certain knowledge that at the same moment that we have our coup, Britain will ask for an armistice, which she wouldn't ask for from the Nazis. Then we must work with people we can trust, not with the sort of people who are already working for us in England. It would be a gentleman's agreement. And you can't have a gentleman's agreement without gentlemen. You haven't touched your wife. In time. I prepared the spare bed at my flat. You can tell me your decision in the morning. Just one thing. Yes? Your plan. It all depends on Britain recognizing you. On Britain's request for an armistice, yes. I want to go back to England. Splendid. To go on fighting. I think that would be a tragedy. And I want you to help me. As you said, you're taking a risk in telling me all this. I said I wouldn't try to escape while I was with you. I didn't say I wouldn't repeat what you tell me. My dear Dick, you are a romantic. Who would you tell? And assuming you'd find someone who'd listen. Do you think they'd believe me or you? I could have a damn good try. No, no, of course you couldn't. Officially, you are here because I have been asked to identify you. I can and will assure the appropriate authorities that you are indeed my old friend Richard Player. I can also tell them that you say you're an officer in the Royal Navy and that I'm inclined to believe you. But I could not possibly, in good faith, swear that you are not also a British agent. After all, it runs in the family. Think about it. Tell me your decision in the morning. I've already made my decision. And I won't be needing your offer of a bed. I wonder how many people you've just condemned to death. Damn it, you have to have written authority to open your mouth! Where am I being taken? I'm entitled to retain your own underclothing. Unpair cavalry breeches, an army regulation shirt, an officer's dress jacket. Whose is this? It doesn't matter. Clocks, unpair. What happened to you? And here, that you have been the last and are now free from all other parasites. This is your identity disc. It bears the off-leg number and your number here. You will carry it with you at all times and must produce it on demand by any authorized person. And now need your right hand thumbprint. Give an address. Dick Player, Lieutenant, Royal Navy. Captain Pat Grant, Royal Army Service Corps. Simon Carter. Tim Downing. George Brent. How long have you just been here? We got here a couple of hours ago. What is this place? Well, that's what we've been trying to work out. They're German soldiers, but it's not a barracks. At least I don't think so. No, I think we've been brought here for something special. Now, shut up. 
Our cheerful friend thinks we've been brought here to be executed. Well, there's a funny way in going about it. Yes. We'll have to do something about your uniform. from a bucket handle. Good, eh? I present myself. Captain Jan Jadrihovsky, 1st 17th Polish Lancers. I welcome you on behalf of all many Polish officer prisoners to Koditz. And we will escape soon. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.